So I decided to record a Karazhan lower because I rarely do Karazhan and it's not really a dungeon I'm fond of at all. So regardless of that, I still thought it would be helpful for people to just see it <laughs> because I have pretty much very few Karazhan videos up on my channel. In regards to the instance, I actually have very little knowledge about every trash ability. I mean, I know a good amount, but there were times where I think there was like a Shadow Bolt volley during the middle of the run that one shot me that I wasn't aware of. Um, and then there would be other abilities, or I wasn't entirely sure about which direction we would be going for pulls. It definitely sucked not having communication for this, especially because during one of those early first wipes, I had a pylon where we could have recovered, but everybody released, so I had to go and kill myself. But I was really glad that I ended up putting out really competitive DPS, surprisingly. I mean, my character has literally had the same gear for the past three months. I really don't think I have had any gear swap or changes or upgrades since then, because there is just like nothing for me to get gear from. Aside from the rare Titan Forged from Mythic Plus, but I don't raid, so my gear is pretty stale, but was still able to put out pretty good DPS. So for the trash pulls, definitely recommend um, Wrists and Sefus. I don't have the chest legendary, so I can't use that, but um, yeah, there are some pretty big pulls in this place. So Shadow Priest will be really good here. their love rumbles across the fields will it end in tragedy and now on with the show I honestly didn't recall anything specific I needed to watch out for for this fight so I pretty much just treated it like a trash pull and dodged everything as much as possible. Actually, I think you are able to get a proc off both groups of mobs, but once the smaller ones die, you won't be able to stun the main guys for the proc.
quick tip, don't forget that these skeletal ushers cast a flashlight ability where it pretty much disorients you at the end of the cast and also does a lot of AoE damage. So what I tend to do is maybe halfway into the cast, I will refresh my mind flight. That way I can turn away, face away and continue dealing damage because even if you look away from your target, if you are mid channel, it doesn't break the cast. This fight is actually pretty difficult on Tyrannical, but since it isn't, I assumed that there would only be one Repentance cast, which makes this fight much more manageable. So ideally what you want to do is you want to start the fight off towards the edge of the room. That way, if you do get chosen for Sacred Ground, you don't have to move too far and you won't lose too much DPS. Uh, make sure you drop them right next to the wall, and then after that you want to move away because they will continue to spread along the ground and you don't want to get the dot on you because it ticks for a lot of damage. Um, you do also want to interrupt Holy Shock casts when you can, that way you can get your proc. Otherwise, it's a pretty much tank and spank fight. When she gets Repentance, you just have to get the debuff for one stack. Make sure you just get it beforehand. It doesn't really matter if it's right away, as long as you make sure you have the debuff right when it goes off, that way it breaks you out. After that cast, you wanna break her shield. So I also use Vampiric Embrace after this first one because I knew we would only be getting one Repentance. So the damage from the dot is pretty big or since it's not tyrannical, it's manageable, but I just wanted to help out the heals by having Vampiric Embrace up. Then after that, it's just, the same fight all over again. It's really not so bad.
It breaks my heart to see him like this.
My death here was actually really fast, so it makes me wonder if I was just lacking stamina like other people. I'm really behind on artifact power, so that is probably something that contributes to me getting one shot to stuff like this, but every time I rewatch this clip, it seems like that damage goes off really quickly. So unless I press dispersion immediately, I think I was dead either way, and there's not enough time to move out of it. But yeah, me dying here was really bad because there was no battle res, and then it really dragged out the fight. So I definitely think it contributed to us not completing this on time. We also didn't have communication, so I feel like that definitely contributes to us having a messy run. Um, this wasn't my best run either. I kind of just did it for fun. Timing for the 